Hey there, it's Jason Wirtz from frugalforless.com and I'm really excited to have you guys on how to start making money with your blog on this five day money making blog crash course. And today we're gonna be talking about how to choose your blog name and niche. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So let's go over a quick overview of what we're gonna be covering today. So we're going to be covering what is a niche and why you actually need one. After that, we're going to go into four detailed steps to choosing your niche and some final questions to ask before you make that final decision on your topic. From there, we're going to be covering choosing a domain name and some clear action steps that you can take after this video to get started to choosing your blog topic and your blog name. So before we go any further, let's actually define what a niche is. So by definition, a niche is a narrowed down topic of a broader category that focuses on a target audience. So let's take an example. Let's say we have the broad category of pets and we want to make a niche out of it. Well, we can narrow down pets even further by talking only about pet reptiles. So now my niche is pet reptiles. I can narrow down pet reptiles even further to a more specific niche called my pet iguana, where I only talk about my pet iguana. So a niche that's ideal consists of three important aspects. Those three aspects are a high search volume. There's enough people searching for them low competition, there's not a lot of other bloggers in the same area or related areas, and a high income potential. Can your blog make money? So the great thing about choosing a niche is that it gives your audience and yourself a clear direction for your blog. So let's say a random visitor goes to your blog and they see what your topics are about. They'll have a clear idea of what content to expect and what type of things to expect on your blog. So for example, if I only talk about pet reptiles, I know that the path of my blog is going to be in the direction of only pet reptiles. So the great thing about this is not only for your audience to know about what your site is about, but it's great for you as well because you'll know how to direct your marketing efforts, what areas to research and what content to write and so on. So while it's important for your audience, it's also important for yourself as well. And one last thing that a niche does is that it gives your site a personal touch. Let's take HuffingtonPost.com for example. They have so many different topics and they don't really have a general focus or any focus at all. So it's difficult for me to actually relate to the writers on that site. However, if there's just one person talking about one specific topic area and does it really well, it's a lot easier for me to connect with that person as a reader. So this just makes your blog more unique and it makes it easier for your audience to want to come back for more because they have something or someone they can relate to. So the first step when choosing your niche is to follow your interests. So we highly suggest choosing a topic you're interested in. And why? Well, this is going to reflect in the tone of your blog. It's going to reflect in your writing, your marketing efforts, and essentially anything else. And your audience will pick up on this. If you're writing about a topic that you're not interested in, it's going to show in your writing voice and your audience will see that you just don't care. And you're not even going to care about putting effort into your marketing or anywhere else on your site. Not only that, but by choosing a topic we're actually passionate about, it means we're probably going to have more knowledge on the subject, and therefore it's going to be a lot easier to write about it and a lot easier to actually research it. On the other hand, if I choose a niche or a topic that's very boring, I'm not really going to have any interest in researching it or even care to know more about the subject. The great thing about choosing something you're passionate or interested in is that it helps prevent burnout. So take this advice from an experienced five-year blog on personal finance. So I wouldn't have continued with frugalforless.com for five plus years if I wasn't genuinely interested in the topic. So if you see yourself as a long-term blogger, it's better to stick with a topic that you're passionate about so you can keep writing about it. And yes, despite popular belief, you can make money from your passion. Of course, there are some exceptions to this, but nowadays there are so many different money-making programs for bloggers. Most niches out there can make money and we'll show you some detailed steps on how to do this later. So the next step is to narrow your topic down, step two. So we mentioned that an ideal niche has a high search volume, low competition, and the potential to make money. So for now, let's just focus on the first two, high search volume and low competition. We'll get into the potential for making money a little bit later on in this video. If we choose a niche that's too broad, it's going to make it difficult to stand out against our competitors. That's because everyone else is choosing the same topic. However, on the other side, if we choose a niche that's too narrow, this can result in a low amount of visitors because no one is actually searching for your topic. And we also want to point out that readers will prefer to read articles from experts. So let's take an example of this. 
If both HuffingtonPost.com and MyPetReptiles.com write an article about reptiles, I'm most likely going to trust the article more on the site that only talks about reptiles. HuffingtonPost.com does have a lot of great articles and a strong reputation, but when it comes to reptile content, I'm most likely going to trust an expert on that specific topic or someone who's regarded as the reptile expert or the reptile king. If I want to know something specific about reptiles, I'm going to want to talk to the guy who only writes about reptiles other than the site that talks about anything and everything and happens to have an article about reptiles. So if you're worried about not standing out at all, you still can. By becoming an expert and very defined in your niche, there's a strong chance of you connecting with your audience and standing out amongst other bloggers out there. So we talked about having a high search volume and a low competition, but how do we actually determine this? Fortunately, there are real tools that we can use to help us determine these things. So one of the most simplest and most popular tool out there is Google Keyword Planner, and we can use this to determine search volume. And the great thing about this tool out of the many ones out there is that it's completely free to use. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. So here I am on the Keyword Planner homepage, and we'll put a link in the description. But if you're not sure on how to get here, you can always go to google.com and type in Keyword Planner. It should be the first thing that pops up. On this page, you can always go to Tools and Settings, Planning, and click Keyword Planner to bring up this page. I'm not going to click because I'm already here. So I'm going to click on Get Search Volume and Forecasts, and I'm going to type in Pet Reptiles. Get started, and I'm going to make sure Keyword Ideas here on the side is selected. So I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm going to search for Pet Reptiles. Get results. And let's take a look at what we see here. So we're only going to pay attention to the first two columns. The other columns are more for advertising, so don't worry about them. So let's take a look at our first result, reptile pets. It's not the exact term, but it's basically the same thing. It's still talking about pet reptiles. And we see that the average monthly searches are 1,000 to 10,000 per month. That's great. That's probably enough people that are searching for our topic. Let's scroll down to see what other things people are searching for that are also related to pet reptiles. We see Russian tortoise is getting 10,000 to 100,000 per month in searches. That's fantastic. Maybe I just want to focus my topic only about Russian tortoises. Let's scroll down some more. I see pet lizards, which is great, getting 10,000 to 100,000. And Greek tortoise, 1,000 to 10,000 per month. That's quite a bit. Maybe I only want to start a tortoise blog where I talk about the Russian tortoise and the Greek tortoise. Those could be two different categories. So you can go ahead and scroll down this list to get a general idea of some average monthly searches and maybe some category or article ideas as well that you could write about. Now I'm going to scroll down even further. And I see, for example, low maintenance reptiles. It's only getting 100 to 1,000 searches per month. Topic is very specific, and maybe it's not something that I would want to include in my list of different niches that I might want to choose from. So this is probably a topic I don't want to choose because it's not getting enough average monthly searches. So use this tool to get some topic ideas, and to help you get an idea of how many people are searching for your topic. So the next step, familiarize yourself with the competition, and we can do this through a quick Google search. So here are some questions to ask yourself. Are there a lot of sites that cover this topic? And if so, can you be unique and stand out amongst them? Can you cover the topics found on Google Keyword Planner? There we saw a lot of them. Maybe we can talk about pet reptiles, but there's not a lot of people talking about specifically Russian tortoise or the Greek tortoise. And what makes my blog unique? How can I stand out amongst my competitors? So let's go ahead and research that. I'm going to go to google.com and type in my topic name and then blogs. And here I get a list of different blogs that I have that are related to my topic. So I went ahead and opened three of them here. And here's the first one that came out. That's thatpetplace.com. And here it says that reptile blog. So this is probably one of my main competitors. And it looks like they have a lot of different articles on a lot of different reptiles. So this is a good place to start to assess my competition and to see what type of articles they're writing and where I can stand out. Here's another site I found, World Animal Protection, that isn't specifically focused on reptiles, but it has an article about reptiles. So that's actually a good sign. If the first things that are coming up in Google about reptiles or pet reptiles are not related only to pet reptiles, it means that I probably have a good chance of standing out on the front page of Google as a new pet reptile blog. This blog, on the other hand, is specifically related about pet reptiles. So it's pretty strong for competition. This, on the other hand, talks about world animal protection in general and has one article about reptiles. So those are some things to keep in mind. 
Here we have swell reptiles, so it looks like this is only about reptiles. Another strong piece of competition. How can we stand out against them and what things can we do that are similar that they're doing well and what can we do better that they're not doing? Also, are there too many sites about pet reptiles that are very big and that are doing very well that we can't compete in this area? Or maybe we want to focus on Russian tortoise and the Greek tortoise instead or some other categories. So those are just some things to keep in mind. Just do a quick search and browse through these different sites to see how you can be unique and stand out. One thing to take into account is that competing against blogs with a long history and a strong reputation can be extremely difficult. So that's why we don't want to go after a blog that's doing very well and copy them verbatim. We should be unique about our blog and stand out in our own way with our own personal touch. And finally, the last step, making money. We're not going to go too much into detail about this because we'll cover this in later videos. But what we want to cover here is basically an outline of how we might potentially be able to monetize our site. So thankfully nowadays, thanks to a ton of money making programs for bloggers out there, almost any niche site can make money. Of course, there are some exceptions, but that's generally the exception rather than the rule. So there are five common ways that bloggers make money. That's through advertisements, affiliate marketing, sponsorships, eBooks, and courses. So one thing we can do to determine how we can actually monetize our site is by looking at other blogs in a similar niche to get a general idea. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm here back at google.com and I'm going to just type in pet blogs. Maybe I want to talk about pets other than pet reptiles now. So I'm going to click the first page, the best pet blogs by Pet Life Today. And let's scroll down to number two. I'm going to open it in a new window. And I see this site about a dog named Body or maybe Bodhi, I'm not sure. But the first thing that stands out to me is this ebook that they have selling for $24.99. Bodhi on the road, start your journey now. So this gives me an idea of how I can potentially monetize my site. If I'm going to talk about my pet reptiles, maybe I can talk about my pet reptile and how it's traveling on the road as well. Or maybe I can write about another topic, but that's still related to my pet reptile. So this is still one way to monetize my site. I'm going to browse a little bit more and see what else they have. New pet travel mutt haves, very clever name. Let's click here. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down and there are some pretty interesting products here. I see a cool pet pad. I'm not really sure what that is, but this gives me an idea. Maybe I can sell this product for a commission. So I'm gonna type in cool pet pad on Google. And the first side that comes up is the green pet shop. I'm not very familiar with them. Ah, the green pet shop, the same site, dog cooling mat at amazon.com. Now I know Amazon is a very trustworthy and reliable source. So I'm going to search for an Amazon affiliate program. And I see the first thing that comes up is amazon.com associates. I'm gonna click here. And it looks like you can earn up to 10% on advertising fees with a trusted e-commerce leader. And here's some more information here. So what this essentially means is that I can get up to 10% in commission selling products from Amazon. That's fantastic. So now I have an idea of some products and also some programs I can apply to when it comes to monetizing my blog. And just a heads up, Amazon.com is one of the easiest affiliate programs to sign up for, even if you are a new blogger. The requirements aren't very high and it's a good place to get started when it comes to making money. So go ahead and do the same thing for other blogs and also search for different products in Google and see what other affiliate programs or other type of money-making programs you can find. Another important thing is to look at blogs and see what they're actually marketing or promoting the most because these are most likely products that they're making the most money on. And we also want a piece of this pie. If someone is making a lot of money on a specific product, why can't we do the same? Or maybe we can market a similar product with less competition, but also still earn a high commission. All right, so now that we've walked through those four steps, let's ask ourselves some final questions before we actually decide our niche. So does this topic follow my interests? Again, it's going to be that much easier if we're actually interested in our topic. Are others interested in this topic? Does it have a high enough search volume? We looked at Google Keyword Planner and using that tool to help us determine this. What's the competition like? If the competition is rough, can we stand out by being unique enough? Or maybe the competition is low and the search volume is high, which is ultimately what we want, and we can go ahead and say yes and pull through with this topic. And can it make money? And like we said before, most niches these days can make money, but there are some exceptions. So it's best to take a quick look through Google and look at other blogs 
that are related to your topic and see what they're promoting and see how they're making money. And then doing some research on affiliate programs or maybe other money making programs with specific products or services that are related to your blog. This is just so you know that, hey, my blog can make money. And now I have an idea of how to do that. So now that we have our niche more or less defined, or at least an idea of how to find it, let's cover how to choose a blog name. So the first thing we need to ask ourselves is what is a domain? So a domain is the URL for your blog. So for example, the domain for Microsoft is microsoft.com and for frugal for less, it's frugalforless.com. You can think of a domain as being analogous to the address to your home. So when you use an address to find a place, you use it as a guide or a path to get to your home. In this case, a domain is like the address or a map to get to your site. It works in much the same way. So you may be asking yourself, why do I even need to know what the term domain means as a new blogger? Well, you'll probably be running into this term over and over again, even as a new blogger. So it's best to start familiarizing yourself with technical terms that you're just going to keep seeing. So that's why we're introducing you to these terms now. So how to actually choose your domain name? There are a few things you want to keep in mind. The first thing is to avoid special characters. And this means hyphens, dashes, question marks, things of that nature. This is because it's generally seen as unclean and unprofessional. So we want to make our site clean and professional, and we can do this by avoiding these characters. Not only that, but a lot of spammy sites out there actually use these characters. So if someone sees our site URL and they see all these weird characters in there, such as a lot of hyphens, they may think that it's just a spam site and they may not want to go there. So a good domain name is easy to say, memorable and short and sweet. And this is because a domain name that fits these characteristics is going to ring in the mind of the reader and they're going to memorize it that much more easily. This means that if they want to go back to your site, this means it's going to be easy for them to remember it and type it in directly in the URL bar in their browser. So we suggest choosing a domain name that's related to your topic. This gives your audience an idea of what your site is about. So if I'm writing about my pet reptiles, I probably don't want a domain name that's called mypetsnakes.com. And of course, there are some exceptions to this. There are a lot of blogs out there that don't use a domain name that's related to their topic and they are very successful. Or a lot of people do use their name or their first and last name as a domain name. But in order to make it simple for you and to help you choose your domain name right away, we suggest sticking with something that's just related to your topic. And we suggest going with a .com. And this is because it's a standard and it's very well known and well trusted. But if you do see a domain name that's taken under a .com and you absolutely have to stick with it, let's say I want mypetreptiles.com and it's taken, then it's okay to go with a .org or a .net. So I could use mypetreptiles.net or mypetreptiles.org. But we highly suggest trying to use a .com. It's going to make your life that much easier and better. And it's going to see as a more professional. After all, it is the standard across the web. So go with a .com if you can. So go ahead and come up with a list of a few domain name ideas, but if you ultimately can't, you can use the site Lean Domain Search to help you get some. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So like always, we will have a link to the site in the description. This is the home page. I'm going to type in my topic at hand. So pet reptiles, I hit search. And now I have a list of hundreds, if not thousands of domain names to choose from that are related to my topic. And the great thing about these topics is that all of these domain names are available that they show here. So you don't have to worry about any one of them being taken. So this is a great tool to use to help you brainstorm some domain name ideas if you're having trouble with that. And now on to the action steps, steps that we can actually take after watching this video. So we suggest going ahead and writing a list of your blog niches that you're considering. What topics are you passionate about and what are you interested in? Ensure that each of these topics that you come up with meets the four criteria by answering the following questions. Does this niche follow my interests? Also, is my niche not too broad, but not too narrow? Does this niche have enough high search volume and low enough competition for me to proceed? And ultimately, can this niche make money? Now, we just want to say really quickly that if you're only in for blogging for the fun of it and don't really care about making money, that's okay. But we're going to assume that the majority of our readers are in it for the money as well. After that, go ahead and write down a couple of domain names for each topic that you have in mind. All right, so I really hope you enjoyed this video on how to choose your blog name and niche. And we'll have some worksheets below to help guide you through these action steps so you're not completely lost on the process after watching this video. Otherwise, take care and I'll see you in the next videos.